about sharing, I thought about joy. I thought there is so much going on. How do we address it? And I could go into a narrative of all the news and the things that are happening. And I thought that would take us further away from joy. We know the things that are happening. We know some of the problems, whether we understand them on the surface or we understand them on a deeper level. Those areas where we choose to dive into. But I thought there's so much happening and some of the stuff does not make my soul sing. But some things do. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. You know, in our affirmations, we talk about the things that we choose to do. We talk about affirming love being our greatest purpose, but we talk about searching for truth and using our mind and our hands to challenge injustices with courage, to find hope in times of fear. But you know, one of the things that that affirmation doesn't share with us is how. It's the how. How are we going to choose to do that stuff? Because we can do that stuff and that stuff could spiral us in to a place where we feel the grieving and the heaviness of it. But just like coming into this time together, we get to choose how we do life. My suggestion is that we choose to do those things in joy. But it's just a suggestion. It's up to you. The song that we started with talks about the unspeakable, speakable joy. Joy, 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 joy. And I thought I'd start today with sharing, even though we've had the official time of sharing, that I wanted to take this pastoral time and share with you some of the things that have brought me joy in the recent past. So let me tell you what happened. One day, I decided to take a trek. We have a wonderful history museum, the Pompon, Pomp it's a history museum here in town. You have to look it up if you want to see the correct name of it, because I'll butcher Pompano Museum, Museo de Pompano, I think is what it's called. Don't hold me to that. My Spanish is improving. But I decided that I was going to do a thing. And so I got my handy dandy bus card where I load money onto it in advance in case an adventure hits me. And it took me two buses and that's 30 cents per bus. So this was a 60 cent excursion in my life. And I swiped my card and figured out my transfer spot and went from the 28 to the seven. And I got off at the museum and I was able to wander through and learn about the regions and the different cultures. But I had planned on it being a two museum day because as I was riding the number seven bus to the history museum, I saw one of the municipal art museums that was the artisan craft work of those that are local to this region, local artists. And the city has invested in having a space, a gallery for their sharings. And so as I left the museum, I looked up and the clouds were gray and I didn't have an umbrella, which some of you may know is the story of my life, leaving home, knowing that I need one and then realizing that I don't have it until I'm either halfway to the bus or until something starts dripping on my head and I feel the moisture. Well, this was one of those days but I'd come across a video some time ago and it was talking about socializing our children, that we're the ones that tell them this weather is good or this weather is bad. And I was thinking about Mars and thinking how to give him a better experience of life. And that one of the things it says was don't tell them it's good or bad. It's just a different kind of weather. And so then kids learn that rain is just a rainy day. It's different. It's not that it's bad. It's just a different kind of play that you can do because there's puddles and there's fun. And sometimes you get wet, but you can fix that too. And so there I was as I left the museum, having had a really good experience with the amount of Spanish that I know, I got to see the shrunken heads for real, y'all. I thought this would never happen in the United States. There'd be outrage in even the historical aspects, perhaps, of that. Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't. But I got to see some of this and understand a little bit more about the work 
of shamans because that's an interest for me. I said, when I retire, I'm going to go do documentaries on shamans and shaman medicine. And that's still on my list of things to do. But I traipse through the rain and I'm talking about the kind of rain where you drip. My hair was dripping down my face. My glasses were steamed up and spotted with rain. And there I was like a little kid trying not to fall out in the streets because sometimes the tiles make it slippery. And I traipsed to the museum only to find that they were shut down having lunch until two o'clock in the afternoon. Lunch, I need some of that. And so I decided to take an excursion walk and I walked up the street and around the corner and then I realized where I was and I knew where I was. And I said, let me go this way. And as I went several blocks up, I ended up near Parque Calderon, but there's a spot there that sells just cheese, Gouda cheese. Lots of it, lots of flavors. And you can stand there and taste each one. And I said, how many can I taste? And she says, as many as you want. That was on a previous trip. So I was prepared. And I said, the next opportunity that I'm here and I need to eat, I'm going there because they sell grilled cheese sandwiches. And if you know me, cheese is one of my favorite things. It always gives me joy. And there's a little shop right next to it that's the cutest little thing, and it sells tea and madeleines. I don't know if that's what you call it. macaroons, macaroons, the little cute cookies. You know, my daughters eat them and my granddaughter makes them. They're the little cute cookies that are usually in colors. They're about two bites, but they just look delightful. It's the perfect thing to have with tea. And so what did I do? Even though I was a little bit wet, I sat and I had a grilled cheese sandwich and some tea. And that gave me joy. But then something else happened on a totally different day. It was my birthday and people always say, you know, you want to do something nice for your birthday. And I thought, well, let me tell them what the nice thing is. They can add the $1 to my flower budget. It'll give me a whole lot of birthday joy that'll keep giving. And there's some folks on social media that's just as enamored with fun and joy as me. And you know what they did? They sent $1 donations to my Cash App account. And guess what they did? They increased my flower budget for the next rest of this year, which is almost over and all of next year to $2 a week in flowers. And so each week we get flowers. Now I get the personal enjoyment because they live at my house, but it was a collective effort of about 10 people, including my daughter who said, is that what you want for your birthday? Uh Uh-huh. 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 $1. Uh Uh-huh. 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 And if you put several, then that gives me several weeks and we can enjoy. And today, because I didn't go to the market yesterday, but I got up this morning and went because I need food and my $2 worth of flowers today. And so every week I take my $2 to the market and get our collective flowers and those $2 bundles of flowers give me joy. And then I was at the market one day and I was sitting because my friend was waiting for her chicken to come off the rotisserie. And there was a young man there with his dog and there was a little boy with an ice cream comb standing nearby and the little boy had ice cream dripping down his face and his hands, but he was teasing the dog. He must have been two, but I can't really tell because the stature is very short and maybe he was three, but he was walking with his dad and I saw him hold the cone out to the... um dog but pull it back and hold and this dog was trying to behave but the temptation was there and as I sat there I was giving commentary and the person that was holding dog was this 24 year old man named Justin and I said your dog is so well behaved because that temptation with that little boy is irresistible And from that conversation, a friendship developed, and that young man is now helping me with my workout plan. He came over this week, and not only did he give me a plan, we went through the chest, the abs, the shoulders, the front, the side, the back of the shoulders, the trapezoid, 
the uh, uh, something else, the upper legs, the lower legs, the calves, the 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 back and the something, something. We had to go through all of them so I could learn them, which was part of why I was on the couch on Saturday because my body was like, we want to get there, but we're not. But having a young person in life spend their time investing in me, this grandmother, <laughs> who's at the market being silly over ice cream cones and little kids. And that gave me joy. And I'm not a TV watcher, but it was a rainy day yesterday and my body, like I said, was aching. And I was grateful to have a couch and a remote control and tea and popcorn and a rainy day to give me an excuse to stay on the couch with my blanket and pillows all day. And that gave me joy. And then having a neighbor who grows all kinds of flowers and started them years and years ago so that the flowers grow right outside my window. And it brings the hummingbirds and recently these yellow birds that sit on the wire. There's one sitting there now in groups sometimes of six, seven, eight or ten. I've just noticed the yellow birds, but the hummingbirds come and visit outside of my windows regularly. And that gives me joy. And then being new to this community and yet going out in public and having people know my name. I was at the market this morning and I have a friend from Venezuela and I forget her name, but she walks past me as I'm getting my flowers from the little old lady that I often get them from. And all I hear is Viva Venezuela. And I know that's my friend because that's what I call her, Viva Venezuela. She's an immigrant here too from Venezuela and she works at the market. She used to work selling nuts and grains, but now she works at the rotisserie chicken spot which was what we were sitting at when I saw the young man with the dog and the little kid in the ice cream cone. And she passed me this morning and she got to me before I got to her. But oftentimes in the neighborhood, as I'm walking, I'll see our taxi drivers. And because my name is quite unique here in a Spanish speaking world, they remember it. You see, my name is Lorana in English, but it's also Lorana in Spanish, which means the frog. And I think sometimes they think my Spanish ain't that good and that I've made a mistake because sometimes they'll say, oh, la reina, which means the queen. Doesn't that sound noble? And I say, uh-uh, my mama don't speak no Spanish. My name is Lorana. <laughs> it really is. I'm not a frog, but my name <laughs> sounds like the frog. And from there on, they remember me. So when I'm walking sometimes, I'll hear a toot toot. And if I look up, I'll see a wave and they'll say, la reina. And I'll say, hey, because sometimes I remember their name and sometimes I don't. But having friends and acquaintances that know my name gives me joy. And then sometimes I go to the market and I go to the regular one, usually on the weekend that's nearest my house. And some of the people remember me. There's not many Afro-Ecuadorians and there's not many black expats here. So maybe I stand out for that reason. I don't really know. But this is the second week in a row she's given me free pears. Now, these are little one bite pears. They're little bitty pears. And last week I gave them to my friends. But I went to the market today. And she gave me free pears. And that gave me joy. And then my regular flower lady, whose name I can't remember, even though I ask her regularly, I'm working on it. She remembers me each week. And she and I have had the conversation because I used to have $1 a week is my budget. And she knew that. And then I finally went back and says, and now my budget is $2 a week. And so we decide which flowers I'm going to get for my $2 each week. And today she had some mixed flowers that have red carnations and these beautiful pink and fuchsia speckled carnations and these yellow flowers that have itty bitty flowers and the white flowers and the white roses were today's selection. But each week she knows I'm coming for her and she's got a smile and she told me her name three times today. And finally, I just said, you're just my grandmother. You're my abuela. That's what I'm going to remember. I may or may not get the name right, but people 
and the little old flower lady and what I can do because of her for $2 gives me joy. And then on the other side of the market, there's a little old man. I seem to find the little old senior citizens everywhere I go because they give me joy. But there's a little old man that sits on the other side of the market and he has a little bit of stuff, but I usually buy something from him, even if I don't need it. I spend 50 cents or a dollar and he sits next to the lady that I buy my cacao. And if I haven't come for a few weeks, they say, were you in the United States? And they know that because I talk and we've developed this friendship and he always seems happy to see me. And that little old man reminds me of Pedro. Pedro's my gasoline, my, my, my uh, propane man. We have several that come by throughout the day, maybe two or three times a day. You hear the jazz music playing like it sounds like an ice cream truck that plays jazz music, but that's our propane people. And you hear it a block away. And if you need propane, I usually run out to my patio and say, woo, woo, Pedro. I watch for Pedro, even though there's others that come. I'll wait a day if I've missed Pedro, if he's come too early or I've missed him. And one day he says, thank you for remembering my name. And so every time I hear that jazz music playing and he knows to look up in my kitchen because that's where I usually am, when I see Pedro and I hear the ice cream truck sounding music playing smooth jazz, that gives me joy. And so this morning I've shared with you some of the tales of joy in my recent life but Lorana, that ain't no sermon. So what's the sermon today? Find joy. Search for joy. Joy is a privilege of life and the spiritual journey that I hope we're all on. But what does our spiritual teaching tell us about joy? For those that align with Christianity, Philippians 4, 8, and for those that don't, it's still good information and good principles to use. Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brethren, and add to that humanity, brethren and sisterin, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there is any praise, think on these things. That feels like joy. Think on the things that give you joy, the things that are true and honest and just and pure and lovely and of good report and of virtue give you joy. It says, think about those things. Think about those things. It also says in Nehemiah, go and enjoy choice food, sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. It talks about the coming together, food. Several of you have echoed that today. Those choice foods and sweets that you're preparing, those recipes. It says joy. But what if that isn't your path? Well, the West sometimes dismisses some of the other teachings, but what about those teachings of the East? The very beginning of Confucianism, the Analects of Confucian, the master said, is it not a true delight to learn and to practice constantly what one has learned? Is it not a real joy to see men of kindred spirit gathered from distant places? Is it not characteristic of the gentleman not to be saddened even when his qualities are not recognized by the world? In Confucianism, we find the joy is about learning. It's about the joy of fellowship, the joy of development of your personality without regard for recognition by the world. So for those that see Confucianism as a way, our joy is about the things that we have the opportunity to learn for life. But what else do our traditions tell us? The Taoist vision is even far more far reaching than Confucian. If Confucian sees the oneness of mankind, of humanity, the Taoist says, let's go a little bit farther. What about the oneness of all creation? Confucian 
finds joy in harmony of human relationships, but the Taoist says the joy in the harmony of the individual with the whole cosmos. If you understand that all things belong to the same treasury, the treasury of nature, we're all a part of this. You're one with nature. You're one with the sun and the moon and the stars and the whole universe. But it depends on how we look at it. For Taoists, the joy is in non-attachment. It's in the perfect freedom. Confucian, the joy is in the fullness whereas the Taoists see the joy of the emptiness. But then what about the Zen? The joy of Zen, it springs from enlightenment, being enlightened in yourself and bringing enlightenment to others. But the enlightenment, if it comes at all, comes unexpectedly in a flash. And there's a writing that symbolically was presented in a little poem by the Buddhist. It says, I spend a whole day in search of spring, but I could find no trace of it. Although my sandals were worn out walking through the misty hills on my return home, regaled by the fragrance of the plum blossoms in my garden, I suddenly saw spring in full bloom on the tenderness of branches. And they were talking about true enlightenment is what we find at home, but it's the going out into the world, into life, that when we come home, those lessons connect us. Those lessons enlighten us. It says in Zen, there's two diseases to avoid the practice of. And it says the first is to ride an ass in search of the very ass you are riding. And the second disease to try to avoid is in riding the ass and refusing to dismount. Nance talked to us about the donkeys this morning briefly. The Zen master said that part of the illness is searching for something that's right here within. But the other part of the illness is staying here within and not going out to be able to learn those lessons and bring them back in and honing them into your life. That all of these are about joy. And then Henry Newman says, joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. This quote is from Henry Newman where he expounds, he says, joy is essential to the spiritual life. Whatever we may think of or say about God, when we are not joyful, our thoughts and words cannot bear fruit. Jesus reveals to us God's love so that his joy may become ours and that our joy may become complete. Joy is the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved and that nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, or even death can take that love away. It says joy is not the same as happiness. We can be unhappy about many things, but joy can still be there because it comes with the knowledge of God's love for us. Joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. It is a choice based on the knowledge that we belong to God and the universe and have found in that place our refuge and our safety and that nothing, not even death, can take that away from us. Each of us can identify with seeing the things in life that make us unhappy. They're all around us, let's be real. But in our spiritual journeys, we have the opportunity to choose joy. My kind of joy may not be your kind of joy, and that's okay. But my challenge to you is that each day you go out and choose to find those things in life. Maybe they've been hidden in plain sight from you in the past, but my challenge is for you to go and find joy, to choose joy every day.
That's my challenge and my charge to you this morning. 